October, November, 2023, Paper 2, Variant 2. Question 1. The elements silicon, phosphorus, and sulfur, they are in period 3. A part 1. Describe the variation in atomic radius from silicon to sulfur. From silicon to sulfur, we know that it's a cross period. And these uh, elements, they are in the same period, so they have the same inner electron. And we know that there's going to have a constant shooting effect. Because across a period, we know that proton number increases. So when proton number increase and the uh, shielding is almost constant, we know that attraction of the nucleus towards the electrons, the valence electron is uh, stronger, so the size is going to be smaller. Means across this period from silicon to sulfur, we know that atomic radius okay, will decrease. Part 2. The melting point of silicon is 1410 and the melting point of sulfur is 113 degrees C. Explain this difference. Um, first, you need to um, explain uh, or to tell the, their structure, whether it's giant or simple. Normally, for the high melting point and boiling point, they're going to have a giant structure. And low melting point and boiling point, they're going to have uh, the simple structure. So for silicon, we know that it's group 14, is similar to the current. Uh, so it's going to have a giant covalent structure. And the sulfur, it has low melting point because uh, it just uh, has the simple molecular structure. Means one molecule of sulfur, it has uh, eight atoms inside. So between the sulfur molecules, they're going to have a very weak Van der Waals forces or intermolecular forces. And this force is easy to break. That's why the sulfur is has the uh, low, lower melting point compared to the silicon. Okay, so first again, uh, explain uh, their structure, giant covalence for silicon and simple molecular for the sulfur. Okay, after that, uh, you have to explain which bond is going to break. For silicon, it's going to involve the covalence bond breaking. Sulfur is just involved intermolecular force breaking. Means the covalent bond inside the molecules, the sulfur, uh, is not going to break. It just the intermolecular force will break. Okay, that's why more energy needed to break the covalent bond in silicon than the intermolecular force in this sulfur. Okay, part B. 1. Complete Table 1.1 show the total number of uh, S and P electrons in the silicon, phosphorus, and sulfur. Uh, so for this one, um, you need to use the diagram uh, to show. Uh, for this uh, silicon, uh, we know that the uh, total uh, this uh, S electron is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's 6 electron. And total P electron is 6 plus 2, 8. So therefore, for the silicon, total numbers of electrons in S subshells is 6. Total numbers of electrons in P subshell is 8. Phosphorus, we use uh, the same, uh, same way. Um, phosphorus, again, 1S, 2S, 3S, total 6 electrons. For the P electrons is 6 plus 3, so it's 9. So it's 6, 9. For sulfur, okay, the S electron again is uh, total electrons is 6 electron, and the P electron is 6 plus 4, 10. So it's 6, 10. Okay, part 2. Construct an equation to represent the first ionization energy for silicon. Uh, for the ionization energy, uh, it must start from one mole of gases atom. So it's always in gases form and must see one more. And because it's first IE, so it just need to release one electron and it's form SI positive. And this one also need to be gases form, gases ion. Part three, three possible values for the first ionization energy of phosphorus are given. So uh, 619, 893, 1060. 
Um, for the phosphorus, uh, first we need to uh, compare with the these uh, sulfur and silicon. Sulfur is has one thousand kilojoule per mole. Uh, we know that uh, uh, group fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen, there will be uh, an irregularity between the group fifteen and sixteen. So the group sixteen. Uh, the first IE is slightly lower than group 15 because of the spin pair repulsion. So therefore, uh, we must choose the one that slightly higher than the group 16, means uh, the sulfur. Sulfur is 1000. Okay, we know that group 15, the first IE is going to be slightly higher than this. So we choose 1060 kilojoule per mole. Okay, so this is for the phosphorus, uh, 1060, because sulfur is 1000 okay, given in the uh, table. Okay, why this sulfur is has lower uh, first IE? Uh, because there is a pair of electrons in the P orbital, and these electrons, they have repulsion, and uh, more specifically, we say that spin pair repulsion, and this spin pair repulsion will let the electron release easier and therefore uh, <coughs> lesser heat needed to release this electron. Okay, so and the, this uh, first IE of sulfur is lower than the this uh, first IE of phosphorus. Uh, that's the reason why. Okay, so we choose this one, yeah. And explain your choice, uh, including comparison of your chosen value uh, to those uh, silicons and sulfur. So you have to compare the phosphorus uh, uh, the, to the silicon and sulfur. First, we compare the phosphorus and silicon. Um, because the this one is group 15, this one is group 14. Uh, so this one has more proton number, uh, means greater nuclear charge. And they have this constant shielding again. So when this one has higher proton number and constant shielding effect, we know that the nuclear attraction also greater. So you need to start from the nuclear charge actually because phosphorus has greater nuclear charge than the silicon and they have the constant shielding effect. Therefore, phosphorus has greater attraction of nucleus for the outer electrons compared to silicon. So again, uh, because of the greater charge and therefore it has a greater attraction. Uh, is of course it's better for you to put the constant shielding effect, right? So, and this is a uh, uh, the full comparison, right, between this uh, uh, phosphorus and the silicon. Okay, in the uh, first IE. Okay, after the P and the, this uh, SI, the silicon comparison. So we need to compare the sulfur with the phosphorus as well. Okay, so why the sulfur has a low, lower I, IE, first IE than the phosphorus? Okay, again, must use the spin pair repulsion to explain. So because sulfur has two electrons in the 3p orbital here, this one, these two electrons, and um, Okay, which will give a spin pair repulsion, therefore the electrons will release easier, lesser energy is needed. Uh, that's how you explained. For the part four, SiCl4 and PCl5 reacts uh, with water to form the misty film. Identify the chemical uh, that responsible for these uh, misty fumes. Okay, it's quite easy. Uh, if you Understand, if you know the equations, then you will get the answers uh, 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 very fast. Okay, so when SiCl4 with water, it will form a white precipitate, the SiO2, and uh, these uh, white fumes, HCl. PCl5 with the water, also it will undergo hydrolysis. It will form two acids, the phosphoric acid and the HCl also. So therefore, the HCl that form is the misty fume. So answer is hexia. Okay, part five. Predict the shape of the SCL two molecule. Um, so we know that the SCL is uh, okay. Sulfur is uh, group sixteen. So it will form one uh, sing, uh, one bond with the uh, two chlorine. 
so it has two lone pair so therefore we know that uh, this one is not going to be a linear geometry central atom with two lone pair two bonding pair so it's actually a v-shape uh, but it's better for you to say non-linear rather than v-shape nowadays so you just put non-linear right for this uh, molecule okay that's all thank you